Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Into the Pit. I have my buddy all the way from the UK, Mr. Peter Paul Parker, and uh, he he's he's an awesome person, number one, and uh, found out that even though we're thousands of miles apart, we still have quite a bit in common, and uh, I've had him on my positivity show. Uh, he's into things like meditation and, and uh, you know, doing better for your own body and mind and and i really appreciate that fact but found out that we have something else in common he's into the paranormal and ufos and things like that and he's coming to to some discoveries and uh he's going to discuss those with us today and we're going to have a great conversation because i'm ready to pick his brain and see what he's found out and uh, hopefully expand my own knowledge on the subject so how are you today peter yeah i'm really good and uh, thank you for such a, a marvelous introduction and the, the feelings mutual it's really great thank to you. connect with you again you know so we've, we've before we even did our first podcast we, we spoke for like three or four hours three or four times so that just <laughs> opening up our consciousness and opening our minds to different possibilities which i feel this time in human uh, history is the most important thing that you can do is open your mind to different possibilities and see what is actually out there and, and your empirical evidence will grow once you do that and which is what happened with me i've got some remarkable stories that have actually physically happened to me and i, I just wanted to share them i thought it was uh, it, it stemmed from an interview I, I saw the other day that suddenly put a lot of pieces into place which was amazing so thank you oh cool well you know i've i've studied ufos and yeah, i've watched documentary after documentary and read and and uh of course you know watch a lot of the the shows on the subject and talk to a lot of people uh, i don't know if you know but uh, jan harzen who is i don't know if he still is but he was the director of uh, the mutual ufo network also known as mufon I uh, talked with the lady who is the uh, the head of the chapter here in the state of Texas and a, a few other, uh, Carolyn Corey, who's, uh, she's very much into the subject and she's also uh, a psychic and uh, I, gosh, I could probably name you a few hundred more, but I'm always anxious to hear more because I, I believe that there is alien life out there. I think it would be uh i don't know what's the word i'm looking for um you, you kind of fool yourself if you think that you're the only civilization that can be in this universe i mean the the possibilities are endless uh, you know our our own uh what what is what i'm looking for here too i'm, I'm having brain farts this morning man the aliens have taken <laughs> over my brain uh you know we've had well, organisms organisms that have traveled on you know meteorites and things like that that have hit our planet and have oh, yeah. become life that's happening all the time though that that, that uh, yeah it's happening all the time uh, life well, this uh, enormous lie enormous cover-up so I, I guess you've covered all the majestic 12 and all of that uh, how they've covered up um, roswell and and mm -hmm. what happened in the uk um, my experience started off at school when i was um, it was about 11 years of age and we saw, well, a friend of mine I was talking after lights out and he was facing the window and he saw this um, cigar shaped um, object moving very strangely in the sky and he got really excited. He was a Italian guy and he's going, oh my goodness, look at me. I'm going, calm down, calm down. And by the time I'd looked around, I just saw the back of it shooting off really, really quickly. And I thought, wow you know that that wasn't an airplane that wasn't a a jet or it wasn't anything that i knew of and, and that that made me realize what was that and i never really looked into it but it, you know when you lodge something in the back of your mind you think uh, something will come up about that uh, later on in my life and there was a time when i was standing at a bus stop and i was there was a an asian gentleman next to me who was a sikh so these are very proud warriors from india and all of a sudden there was this like whooshing sound really big whooshing sound and it was a, a busy uh, day with lots of traffic and it wasn't that windy but what happened was 
this bowl shape started to form next to me, like this whooshing sound, like something was a little bit out of control. And it, it started to push the trees backwards. And it was going whoosh, 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 and pushing the trees. So the trees were like forming this disc shape behind me. And then obviously it goes whoosh, then silence and it just disappeared. And I turned around to this Asian guy and said, what the heck was that? And he went, I don't know, but it was very strange. And it was like, yeah, again, I put it into, I, I spoke to it with a few friends in the pub. They're going, oh no, what, what has Peter been taking now? You know, it was like, but it was like a real experience. It really happened. And I'll come to what I think that was in a minute. But, uh, and then I, I was talking to other people that, um, who've experienced this and they say yeah that was definitely something that was not in our view but it, it possibly could be a um so something from the government that was that's been um re, re, remade from a crash of one of the roswell sites or something like that which got me into this thinking about our the paranormal and ufos so i've sat in my garden many a times and, and thought about you know what, what are these things and then I saw another uh, disc-shaped object, almost uh, moving left and right, but it was it was um, moving in a, in a really different way. Then it suddenly bobbed up and moved a bit quicker and shot off. I thought, what was that as well? Uh, so I've, I've seen like three or four incidents where I've seen objects in the sky. I thought, well, what are they, and why are they um, coming in and out of our consciousness? And that's where I found that. I, I saw this interview with uh, Terence McKenna. He's talking about psychedelics, but he was talking about consciousness more, and he was actually talking about the UFO subject. And he covered all the cover-ups and things like that, which I think most people can find quite easily on the internet. There's no, no point in going over that because there is a enormous cover-up with this, and there's a reason for that cover-up. And that's an important thing to really understand why they're covering up. But what he was talking about was the Carl Jung approach to it, i.e. the consciousness approach to it, where we, if you think about us as human beings, and I, I talked about this on your, your other podcast about us being um, like grounded. So we, we're like a pyramid shape. We're, we're grounded to the earth because that's part of our physical reality. Mm -hmm. But part of our spiritual or energetic reality is a lighter vibration. So as you come up your chakra system or your, your energy body, it becomes lighter, so the frequency becomes, the, the waveforms become higher, so you can actually connect more with the dots, uh, uh, with the frequencies above you. So if you think about frequencies, you're, you're looking at lower base frequencies, which where we're being trapped in the material world for a reason by the powers that be, as it were. And once you can transcend that and come up into a higher frequency or vibration, you start to see more of this reality that we see because we only see about 0.035% of our physical light. So once you start to get past that, you, you begin to realize what this reality is. So all the leprechauns and uh, island and all the other entities that flow in and out of our perception or our vision, they are existing around us. So that there's, there's, it's not just coming from other planets, that there's things living around us all the time and we don't notice it because we're we're literally like moles in a hole we're blind as bats <laughs> it's reality yeah, agreed. we just can't see anything and when you start i'm starting to see now when you raise your vibration and you start to um and i've experienced this firsthand you get dark entities coming onto you that would try and stop you from doing that and the our, our, our ancestors called it the archons the gnostics called it the archons and now I've had two experiences of that, which is slightly different from the UFO phenomenon. Two experiences at one time, I was uh, in, in a uh, living in, in, in my woke up one night to this entity at the end of my room, just suddenly starting to come t towards me. Oh. I jumped on it and I pushed it down into the floor and it just suddenly disappeared. And I woke up next morning, I was speaking to my friend, I said, there was a weird, really weird um, uh, thing happened last night. There was this dark entity, just, the room went really cold, and I, I saw this dark entity at the end of the room. 
And I, I got rid of it by just telling it to go away. And he said, I had a really strange experience last night as well. He said he, he felt a heartbeat under himself and almost sensed breathing near his ears, um, which was, and, and the room went cold as well. And then the next night, I had the same thing. I, I had the heartbeat and the, the, the breath, and he had the entity appear in his room. And I thought, well, what the heck was that all about? And it was because we were starting to wake up our senses. And then that moved on to when I moved into Staines. And I was really starting to wake up and question authority at that point. I'd, I'd um, just come out of becoming, uh, I was a professional musician. I'd just coming out of that and wondering what the nature of our reality was because I'd had a couple of out of body experiences. And I'd, I'd saw, um, Ben's father, who I used to work in his studio in Shepparton, um, I come out of the studio and I saw his father, clear as day, right in front of me. I said, hang on a minute, I'll be with you in a minute. I'd forgotten he died, by the way. Hang on, I'll be, I'll put, and I put my stuff down, shut the door, and I, I turned around to see him again. And he disappeared, completely disappeared. And then I remembered he, he's, he's not with us. He's, he's, he's on a different plane to us. But it was him, as clear as day. I knew him really well. He was a lovely man. I loved him to bits, uh, like my own father. And then I walked out to get into my car to drive home and two police officers um, pulled up and said, uh, you never believe what I just saw. I just saw my friend's father and he's dead. And of course they say, what have you been smoking, sir? What have you been drinking? Yeah, of so, course. Anyway, I went home and then uh, as I was waking up more, I was looking into the, uh, the, the tyranny that's being put over us with the, the common law, destruction of common laws. I was getting into that. I was getting into discussions with politicians because I didn't, I didn't know any of this was going on. I was completely naive to all of it. And because I was raising my sort of consciousness and, and broadening and going, oh, goodness me, this has been going on for years. Then the, the, the dark entity started to get more intense with me. And it, it, I was waking up every, every night in my room, in my flat, feeling that I'd been robbed just completely robbed the flat had been robbed off i look around and, and think this doesn't look right this is this, this looks like i've been um well there's something stealing from me and this was going on and on and on uh, and i from all the um demonstrations and the the talks i've been to on what was wrong with us um society some people call it the truth movement or the um the uh the truth is or whatever I, I, I met this guy who got me into a more what i would say a spiritual path but that's such a loaded word but it, it was getting me to realize the nature of our reality a little bit more and he said you've got um you've got an entity attached itself to you and it's coming to see you at night and he said uh, black tourmaline is a very good way of getting rid of it but yes. just tell it to go away just tell it to go away and it did it started to form at the end of my um, bed and I couldn't believe what I was seeing it was almost like reptilian in shape and I just literally stood up and said get out of here go away don't come here again and it disappeared so after all of these things that have happened to me and listening to that Terence McKenna um, interview I realized that these as you raise your vibration these things can come in and out and you start to see them a little bit more like I'm seeing them more now as I'm doing deeper meditation, I'm actually hitting what our ancestors call Samadhi, which is like a, that real true blissful place transfers, transcends male, female politics, everything it transcends everything. You're just in this place and it's absolutely beautiful. But while I'm doing that, when I come back into the material world, I'm seeing these dark entities in the sides of my eyes and looking around and they've gone. I see shadows going over the floor and things like that as I'm sensitizing my 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 brain to the higher frequencies it seems like the lower frequencies don't want us to actually transcend this so i feel that there's something I, I kind of brushed it off at first but i feel that there is a cover-up of all of this for a reason and, and the reason for that is on a lower level is just to keep us in this prison of the material body so that we just exist and we can exist for their pleasure at their whim and and now that's just getting worse and worse and becoming more and more obvious on a higher level i feel that we are beings that can evolve and cleanse and and, and become more what i would say spiritual but it's such a loaded word but just to become more of the being that we actually are and i think this is a process that we're going through at the moment 
as a planet that's actually cleansing ourselves of this garbage we were talking about that um, alec baldwin incident earlier and that is another unveiling of what a horrendous society we're living in for people to actually have that karmic incident oh, happening God. to them and then the repayment because of what they've done in the past and i'm seeing a lot more of that now so it really it blew my mind that i i saw this interview and it suddenly hit me that this ufo phenomena is these beings that are a, a lot higher um, than us a lot higher um, vibration than us and they can come into our reality change shapes which is why people say they see these enormous shapes but then all of a sudden they can turn into this little dot and that explains all the um, the foo fighters that they saw in the second world war that they didn't mm -hmm. really report and when i when i've learned about just just a few foo fighters for instance i was going why isn't this common knowledge that these little balls were next to planes and, and they were just flying about watching us? And then the idea of uh, UFOs coming in and, and stopping nuclear bombs and diffusing nuclear weapons and coming in and, and interfering with nuclear silos where you got nuclear bomb where they, they launched nuclear bombs from and they, they turning them off. I go, why isn't this common knowledge when you've got top generals uh, coming up and telling us that this has happened so there's, a, there's an enormous cover-up of our reality and what it actually is and it's it's really sad to see human beings in such a terrible state as we are at the moment because reality is fleeting <laughs> huh? reality is fleeting it's incredible it's absolutely incredible and when you realize that it is incredible and you see how they're rubbing us into our um rubbing our nose into this grindstone is wrong absolutely wrong and yes. it's it's the unveiling of our consciousness is i personally feel that why we're on this planet now as incarnated beings is to unveil this and bring this out and get rid of this this darker entities and, and i'm seeing it now as i do a, a lot of interviews and this is i've devoted my life to this now my qigong practice on meditation and exploring this strange existence that we live in because actually reality is far <laughs> stranger than fiction right. they can't even they couldn't even make a film on what this reality is uh, they've, they've, they've had stabs at it like the matrix and avatar and things like that but you, you can't you couldn't make a film on it because it's it's such a a, a wonderment and that's mm -hmm. what where, where the mystery comes from in our when they start to talk about mysteries uh, in, in our spiritual world, it, it is mystical. It's mystical, and to me, it's exciting. It makes yeah. life exciting as well, as opposed to get up, go to work, pay us your money because you are a serf, and then go back to bed and then do the same thing tomorrow. And don't worry about feeling stress or anxiety. We've got a pill for that. <laughs> that will yeah. give you another realm. <laughs> that, that's a whole nother uh, show right there we could talk about. Now, I've, yeah. got, I've got some points that I'd like to bring up and uh, yeah, I'd like please, to get you're... your opinion on. Uh, number one, there's definitely a different spectrum when it comes to the paranormal and UFOs and things like that. You've got those who just outright deny that it, it's there's it's not logical whatsoever it can't happen you've got those who really could care less either way and then you've got those that you know they're just not sure and you've got folks that are on the other end of the spectrum that are oh my god yes this is absolutely true they believe every single story you know it could be absolutely the most uh, you could find an a logical explanation for a lot of stuff and they're but they're mm -hmm. willing to believe anything paranormal i'm that part of the spectrum that i believe but i'm very skeptical about everything yeah. um how would you deal with anyone from these categories at, at, when you want to tell your story because you, you know you're going to have some folks out there going to be like this guy's a nut and then you got some out there that are ready to you know take up camp at your front door and worship you as you walk out <laughs> yeah 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 um the people who are skeptical that um of, of what i'm saying i think i'm a nut I, I really don't care about that anymore because i think it's such a low vibration to have, have such a closed mind 
And I would point them to the conditioning of our schooling and education system. I've been on a few podcasts now who are trying to look for solutions to children and what we teach them. And we teach them to have an open mind and we teach them to focus on the possibilities that are endless that your life and, and what this experience can be. So dogmatic people are the ones who are causing the problems that we're living in at the moment. It's the dogmas that we are born into. And I used to challenge people who used to challenge me on, on tube stations or, or when I was out in London quite a lot. And I would ask them, say, to stop something and they would challenge me. And then I would challenge them back and saying, do you think this world is a just and, and proper place to live in? Do you think it's peaceful and, and happy? And they'd say, no. I said, well, you're creating that world that isn't peaceful and happy and you're creating the, the disharmony in this world. So I, I bring them up on their dogma because they're trying to be tough and hard and all this kind of stuff. And I thought, I, don't, I really don't, why would I want to fight on the way out? I just want to go home and have a beer. <laughs> and I, I challenged them on that. So I would challenge them in the same way. I said, well, how can you know as a human being with your tiny perception that there's nothing going on outside of this? And I remember going to see a guy called Ian Crane in this country and we were speaking in a pub and the bloke heard us over heard us talking. He walked up to me and said, um, you don't believe in this UFO crap, do you know, all this, this nonsense? And I'm going, well, what do you believe in? He said, well, he didn't know. He couldn't answer that. We said, what do you actually believe in? What do you, what do you actually believe in? Do you think this is a five sense reality that we live in? and that your intuition and your imagination and all this other stuff that you can go into uh, which will distort time for you and all this do you think that's not reality do you think that's not a part of your reality and he was completely lost and dumbfounded because he was stuck in this dogma of saying this is it and that's where we're being driven to as children when we come out of this reality and uh, when we when we're being born and we're living in those seven years of that really important time we're being told, no, don't use your imagination. No, don't use your um, senses, your intuition. And you, so you're conditioned to be in this position. And then when you do ask, ask the questions at school, you're saying, don't be so stupid. Don't, you know, pull yourself together. Focus on what's real. You know, this, this is rubbish. And of course, we're going to be living in a society that people that produces people like that to hold this society into that position where people want us to be. And I'm not really being paranoid like that because I, I don't feel paranoid anymore. When I used to smoke a lot of pot, I, I did feel paranoid, but and I wouldn't have feelings like that. But I see now that all they're doing is holding this meme in place so that the forces that, that are holding it in place don't have to do anything and, and because they're powerless. All they're doing is, is, is projecting our perception into this place. So I would say that, that they were holding this world. If someone would say that to me, I said, well, you, because of your dogmatic approach to the world, you're actually holding it in this psychotic state that it lives in at the moment, i.e. you've got people who could make as much money that generations of their families to come will live very comfortably, thank you very much. And you've got on the other end of the spectrum, people who are starving to death and got nothing. And you, you, you call this a civilised society? <laughs> it's psychotic. It's absolutely psychotic. So I would challenge them on that. Um, because once you get past the nature of our reality, it becomes mystical, which is what a lot of religions and um, spiritual practices try to condense and put it into a lovely little package for you so they can give you a book and say, live by this book and you'll be OK. The book is inside you. I've always said that. And our key to opening this is inside of you. It's your perceptions. And if you're stuck in a dogmatic position, that will limit your perceptions in a big way. So that, that, that spectrum you explain, once you, it's a slow process, but you can start, I, this is what I had to go through, is, is release all of those dogmas and those those um, conditions that you have to go into this open mind where you go, well, actually, I, I don't know what it is that actually is this higher level of consciousness, but I'm starting to experience it more as a human being with my intuition and I'm not scared of it anymore. It doesn't scare me whatsoever. I think it's a wonderful thing when I see shadows in the corner of my eyes. Go, oh, who's this visiting me then? And then when I see shadows coming across the floor, I say, who's this visiting me? Who are these people around here? It doesn't scare me anymore. And, and because I can see it and I know that other people see it and I see other clairvoyants and clairsentients who get this 
deeper level of consciousness i think it's absolutely fascinating yes well you can't say that you're an open-minded person if you're not willing to look at things that in all different perspectives um yeah I, I i can't say i believe in everything that everybody believes in but i i learn from experience i also like to listen to what people have to say different stories and and you know get the facts before i say i definitely believe in such and such but at least i'm open to it yeah and a lot of people aren't even open to the fact because they they're so scared to 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 even open up their minds to other possibilities because they're afraid they're going to be ridiculed and oh. it needs we need to get away from from all that you know this stop stop just stop you want me to believe that you're you know one of 900 genders when you wake up in the morning well hey listen to my story <laughs> about the paranormal you know what i mean but exactly I, i've got another question for you and this is something that i don't know i keep putting numbers together and and coming up with what i think is the answer when it comes to ghosts and ufos and cryptids and all these other things in the paranormal is there a correlation between them um is it you know just another form of our our higher being seeing these things and when it comes to ufos this may be a contradictory question here are they angels or what we think are angels are actually ufos that's a very very incredible question uh, the 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 lower entities i think we're seeing them because they're they've manifested as that form because that's what they think maybe scare us or um maybe put us into a state of fear and maybe they're feeding off that low vibration uh, which is what the gnostics said that they did they, that's what they said the archons did they put us into a state of fear because they can um sort of alter your reality as you see it and i've felt them i've felt them around and it's it's like that um time when you're at school and you've been a naughty boy and you don't know what's going to happen you're standing outside the, the headmaster's office and you you, you don't know if you're going to get caned or you're going to get um what punishment you got and that's it's that fear if you can imagine that a hundred times around you where you're you're sensing that that's what the archons can do they can make you feel like that if you allow them to so that's i think the lower entities i think the higher entities i think you're right it is something to do with the evolution of us if you look at the universe there's many many universes and there's 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 going to be planets who are light years ahead of us and light years ahead of growing their consciousness which is why i think i've fallen into qigong so beautifully because it, it's helped me to rise my consciousness raise it i should say and these beings that some of them that come in will be higher beings and there's the there's levels of societies that some people have written out and we're on zero i mean ground zero we're, we're to, right at the bottom but there's levels of society where beings will be coming in of light and they won't come in and interact with you because they know it's going to scare the living daylights out of you so they will do little give you little intu intuitive signs to say you know everything's okay keep going keep moving forward so they've they've like got your back and I, I feel that there are entities coming in that will come in and play like some of them play across the sky and then, then shoot off and there's other ones that are coming in to make sure that we're we're trying our best on our evolutionary path but i i do believe that um gene rodenberry had uh he he got this knowledge from reality i.e the prime directive don't go in and interrupt with a species and i feel that we have been interrupted as a species many years ago by the what they call the anunnaki and i i think they fused our chromosomes that's a fact chromosome one and two has been been uh, fused so that we are a, a modified species as it were on the planet we came on the planet about two hundred thousand years ago and we've been we, we're far more endowed as a being than anything else on the planet because anything else on the planet has, has been given all the tools that it needs to um, survive and we are far 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 beyond that far beyond that our, our capabilities are way beyond just survival we're 
actually far beyond that. So I, I personally feel that our consciousness, how you receive consciousness is the amount of space, say, you have on your brain. That's why we have creases in our brain. So our brains are becoming more creased so we can receive more information, more consciousness. And so is our bodies. That's how um, entities evolve. Say in our gut, for instance, if, if our gut wants to become more healthy, all the cells will actually start to come together and form a body. And then that will become a bigger surface area so that it can receive more information so that it can evolve into a higher state. That's exactly what's happening to us. We're actually evolving into a higher state. And there's something trying to stop us. So these entities that come in on a higher level, they are a, a more um, progressed civilization than us. So it would be like us as human beings looking down at the ant civilization going, well, they're all doing their stuff. Look at them. They all seem quite happy. And what's happening with us is we're going through this enormous change that is really shaking a lot of people up at the moment. Uh, and that is going to be us realizing what we are and moving into that world where we actually act on a higher consciousness so the wars have been important and the uh, the manipulation of human beings has been important because it's making people look at it um in a, at the world in a different way and this movement towards atheism is is also really important because now you've got atheists saying i'm a mystical atheist i mean what, what doesn't that? make a whole lot of sense does it <laughs> <laughs> it's like what no it makes no sense whatsoever I mean, you couldn't be a satanist if you didn't believe in god no no not at all so it, it's it's this whole i see it now as, as this whole thing moving forward very slowly very um sort of consciously almost into all of this being opened up and to speak like this like i was speaking on your other show people will think oh my goodness me who is this lunatic and I, I really have gone beyond caring that because i see that it's our role as human beings once we start to get something understand it understand it then overstand it once you overstand it then you can share share that uh, that knowledge with people just to put that little seed in their mind so that they, if they've got an open mind they could, like you say you, you put it up there you don't have to particularly believe in it and see if anything else comes along your way that will say, actually, there was an element of truth in that, and here's your truth. Go and find that over there, and it will direct yeah. you in that direction if you want it to, or you can say, I'm, I'm not really into that. That's not really what I need to be doing, and you'll find something else that will come in if you allow it to. So that's what it means by having an open mind. It's not accepting everything because, my goodness me, I don't accept <laughs> anything yeah, well, really. Yeah, I, I um, like to know. It's like when I go to meet. Um, people from Islam or the Harry Krishnas or anybody like that and I was saying I would like to explain myself more as a Gnostic I want to know you can tell me all these wonderful stories about your religions and your philosophies and things like that I love it all I listen to it and I'll, I'll take what I need from it but then when you try to indoctrinate me into that that's when I start to have a problem with it because you're actually telling me what to do rather than giving me the the, the idea that I can think about something digest it and then make it become myself which is what we all need to be doing have that open mind where we say this is me you know i am individual here and, I, and that individualness is important because the world everything is connected through um consciousness and our individuality or our individual experience is really really important but once you start to become dogmatic with that individual experience that's when you go into this whole field of the material world which is where they're going into as transhumanists and they, they want to now these crazy fools want to put their consciousness into a um, avatar which is all sort of ai intelligence as well so that they can live forever with their consciousness in this material world yes what are you on to do that and why they would say, i want to <laughs> and you say i'm mad and yet you've got people who run like microsoft who are into this kind of stuff and then they, they say, actually, because I'm going the other way with it, I, th I see the potential in us and the faults in what they're doing. They're calling me mad. And yet they don't know what kind of caliber of people are actually running this world. That's where the problem is. They are the mad scientists. They are the lunatics. They are the nutcases. And they are the ones trying to foist this onto us from whatever um, influence they have on them. 
they're foisting it onto us and i think that's just that's where the problems with the dogmas are with me because you want you, you have to try to explain to someone in very short time how we're actually living on this planet at the moment and how we need to shift out of that and that what to try and explain the control and the manipulation in a few short sentences is is virtually impossible and it's even impossible in an hour or an hour and a half it's like yeah oh well, exactly you've got to look into this well you know i've noticed that through the years the older i get the more kind of philosophical i become i i, I think back okay so when man first walked on the, this earth and they I, I i believe that we were meant to commune together uh that's how you survive and that's the reason why people commune together so you had a better chance mm. of survival i mean just uh, you think about when uh, wolves first started coming around man um they they got more tolerant of men because they wanted to survive because they got a lot of the scraps that guys that the, the men would leave behind and so then they started to commune with man so they could survive even more and they would protect the you know the men and and, and so on and so forth and so that's how we got dogs and i mean there's so many of these examples you can talk about through history but were mm. we meant to commune were we meant to just wander on this planet by ourselves you take care of yourself is it supposed to be survival of the fittest i mean what was the original intent for us to be here you know if you could go back and start things over again and those first few humans made a different decision how different would things be now would we be living in a free society just helping each other and there's no government these kind of things. I, I, I ponder all this stuff. What are the actual, what is the reason why we are here? Is there a reason we're here? Well, well right, right today, uh, the reason we're here is, is to serve the system. But I, I agree with you. It, Darwin even said his own um, thing, his own, own uh, evolution of the species was a not fact it's not a fact he said this is my theory and i don't think this is particularly accurate he actually put that in the book and yet we've gone into a society that's saying it's the survival of the fittest and the strongest survive there is something to do with being strong and surviving of course but if you look at nature and how nature works it's the ones who collaborate with each other that actually survive and it's the ones who are the the best with the best ability to change from their environment, which is human beings, we had that ability to live in the snow or we had the, the ability to live in the, the hottest jungles. We've got that ability to actually adapt and change. And that's why we have survived. And we've got an amazing immune system, which it seems to have gone out the window these days, yeah. that can actually heal us from anything that happens to us on the planet, including sunbursts and radiation and things like that it can actually heal us and that's all gone out the window so is is the spirit of collaboration and communities that is so so important and speaking with each other and not even speaking each other with the language which i find really difficult to put across concepts which is why i i, I tend to put four or five lines of sentence together to try and get you to get the concept rather than what I'm saying. I'm not trying to teach you one and one is two. I'm trying to say, actually, maths is a wonderful thing once you get it. And that's how I've always tried to communicate because I'm not very good at saying, well, one and one is two and the reason is because of this, blah, 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 blah. I'm not really academic like that. I'm more sort of uh, right-brained creative. And that's where I think we've got to go uh, as a society is back into the right brain fix what i call the chakra system or fix our attachment to the earth as a physical entity that's what we are we're, we're a physical entity but something is inside of us which is far more connected to the higher world which is our, our that's the being side of us so the human side of us is like grounded to the earth the being is this what, what people call the spiritual being or the consciousness that comes into our body 
and that's where all the body is, is, is it and it's not it's part of physics and these amazing minds people like Rupert Sheldrake who are coming up with these ideas of actually it's our imagination that can flow and it's our imagination that's creating our reality and once we realize that you can actually start to create a better reality for yourself and once more human beings reach that tipping point of our imagination starting to create a better world for ourselves then it will start to improve and it is already it is that that's already happened is it's enormous actually the the awakening process across the planet of seeing these people like uh, Fauci and Bill Gates and the Rothschilds and the Rockefeller families and you look at them and you hear them talk now you go oh goodness me did you really did you really think that you were going to take this world over with your plan uh, and, and try and subjugate each human being and I to me now I look at it with sadness to think what problems have you got inside of yourself to actually want to do that with another human being like you say I like to go out into my community now since I've broken all this conditioning and see who I can help. Whether I get money or not, doesn't matter. It's not about the money, it's about who can I help now? Where can I go? And I go and help the elderly with their health and well-being. I'm doing it now more online with um, my Qigong and meditation courses that I put out there. So I'm just, who can I help? And now can I make it easier for them if they haven't got much money? I'll literally give stuff away for free. It's, it's not about the money, it's about raising the consciousness. And I think that's where we're going now I've seen I've spoken to people who've setting up podcasts and they're going well it's because I was put on furlough because of this um, so-called pandemic and I thought I'm not going back to my job because I hate it and I hated living like that and I'm going there you go that's you you that's how I was when I walked out of my sales job I, thought, I hate this I'm on yeah I'm on great money but I hate it I don't like it and it's us realizing why are we living like this look at the resources we got around us look at the infinite possibilities we have as human beings look what we can share with each other and look what we can understand in a bigger uh, bigger uh, sort of field which is the paranormal field and where is that going to take us that's that's a phenomenal outlook to life or you can sit there and go oh yeah mr fauci he knows best he knows everything and we must praise at his feet for his wisdom and is, is how he just gives us these little morsels of knowledge you know it's just like oh come on you know come on let's let's all sort of shake it up and 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 not worry about what people think about us and not worry about what what they what, worry about what you think about yourself and are you giving the correct information or or, or bad information what I say is completely honest, and, and I'm, I'm brave enough now to say it, and I'm not worried about what people think. I go, oh, he's, he's some UFO nut, or he's some sort of um, ghost nut, or he's some kind of... It doesn't matter. It do, none of that matters what other people think. It's what you experience, and to me, that's part of the evolution of human consciousness. When some of us reach that higher level of consciousness, the whole thing will change anyway, and all these people will be... I feel in 2022, here's a prediction, I feel one of these people are going to get arrested. For crimes against humanity i really do feel that's going to happen i think that's building and i think it will be one of the states in america that would do it possibly in england but england is just a, a few steps behind australia you know they're, they're trying their best to um everywhere. but i think in australia they're more severe italy is another country to look out for because they're going absolutely bananas in their country as a population. I don't know if you've seen the protests in Italy, but they, they're starting to look really serious as human beings. They're, they're pushing in these green passports and things like that. And they're waking up, the Italians, uh, the, the original Roman Empire, they're, they're waking up and they're the same as the British. The British Empire, the, the people we used to create that empire, the Italians were used to create their empire. And these, these are all people who have been repressed all their lives which is why the america started don't forget that that's why <laughs> we, we started, started this whole country and now look benjamin franklin came we're going back <laughs> we're going backwards now you're going into it again <laughs> wow we we got yeah, into talking so to ufos and we got franklin. into this <laughs> yeah i know it's, but it's, it's, it, it, yeah, it's I think easy it's all part of it yeah it, it, yeah it's all I, part I, of it it's I all the repression so. of it's all part of it and it's linked if i can tell you uh, go go to instantlywiser.com 
The uh, lady's name is Mel S. Brooks. Read her predictions because I got to see her predictions before last year started and read her predictions for the next year. And you, you tell me if this lady doesn't have abilities because she picked up on stuff that you would probably would have, if you would have read those predictions before last year started, you would have said, oh, this lady's a nut. Read what she says. See what's in store for okay. this world. And I, I, I encourage everyone to instantlywiser.com um, and, and, and go to her predictions. Um, we need to wake up. That's all I got to say. We need to wake up. You, you got to realize there's more things out there that we don't understand. And maybe we're not meant to understand, but we're still supposed to pursue. It, it, it's... It, it, there's something fulfilling when you go out and you try to find answers. Uh, don't, don't be in a little bubble and think that, Oh, well, I I've got it down uh, because so-and-so who's just happens to be famous said that there's no way that there's can be ghosts and there's no way there could be UFOs and yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop listening to these nuts. They put their pants on one leg at a time like you do. Just because mm -hmm. they got more money than you do doesn't mean that they're any more special than you are. And that's another problem with people in power. They think that because they have more money and they've been given this power that they're, they're mm. so much better than you are. Uh, you wouldn't be there if it weren't for people like us allowing you to be in power. That's why we, these people shouldn't be able to keep that power very long. I'm sorry that I'm getting on a political rant here. I'm trying not to, but these folks were put there to, to help us solve certain problems, not to completely control my life. Yeah. 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 But I think the UFO phenomenon has got a lot to do with the hubris of what these people are, because if you go back to the 1940s, the Germans were creating the Nazi bell. And all those scientists under Operation Paperclip were taken over to America under Operation Paperclip. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, Von Braun who was um, working on this. And I, I feel that they have created UFOs. And I think a lot of the um, abductions are to do with humans rather than um, ETs. And I think a, a lot of the sites of disks and sources is probably human. Because I, I don't think that the higher entities would be so clumsy and allow us to see them so easily unless they wanted us to see them. And I, I feel it's that um, feeling of superiority and untouchableness because they have this uh, knowledge behind them is putting them in this position. And this is what I think is great about the unfolding of the UFO phenomena and realising actually the higher entities that are coming in and out and phasing in and out of our world and even the lower entities phasing in and out of our world is an important aspect to this because you realize what's real and what's being manipulated to us because you, you I'm sure you've, you've heard of Operation Blue Beam where these people are going to try and um, give us a false UFO um, invasion, a false ET invasion so that we do jump into this whole thing of being controlled and manipulated and every aspect of our life will be controlled because the ETs are here and we need to protect you. I mean, what a load of garbage that is. You, if the, the real higher ETs, I feel, who can transcend across the universe at such speeds are consciousness and they're connected with their, they're probably connected with their crafts, with their consciousness and they can just use like these torsion fields where they, they can manipulate time and space because our consciousness can't really comprehend that but they can so they can use a torsion field so they're literally in our in our uh, vicinity like that it just happens and that possibility to me is amazing because realizing that's where we're going as a species not right not in a lifetime obviously but over the, the period of time and there's like i said at the beginning of this there's they're doing something they're doing this to stop us evolving into this next level because they want to keep that power and control whatever it is whether it's a uh, et like uh, a lot of people talk about the reptilians that's very trendy at the moment or is it uh, insectoids or all this kind of stuff or is it um human beings who are doing the biddings of uh, what they call the uh 
the archons or the 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 they're not solid beings but they're, they're an energy being and and from studying qigong and, and energy yes there's dark energies on the planet and if you look look at the vedas we've got um they call it seven darker realms and, and seven lighter realms and that's what our ancestors told us and i feel that we've got in this point in time in this because time is cyclical not linear in this certain time we're in the middle of cleansing this planet from the dark uh, the darkness the darker energies and this is all part of it this exposure of the ufo phenomena so that you can start to see that there is a purpose for us for being on this planet is to raise our consciousness raise our vibration come together as communities not have a centralized power because that's dangerous and and you start to look after your own and start to look after yourself as a sovereign being you are a sovereign being and i think this whole ufo phenomena is part of that whole consciousness rising is is, is it's all interlinked you're talking about you're ranting about politics no it's all interlinked everything is interlinked and there's this whole way that they covered up ufos and it's been going on for thousands of years they've been documenting it for thousands of years like the crop circles here in the uk that was going on 1500 years ago there's, there's documents go it's talking about people seeing these lights that, that just go whoosh, whoosh, over a field and then they're off and then they walk out there and there's a big crop circle there so it's been going on for thousands of years and it's been covered up for thousands of years but it's, it's still in the in in books uh, it's still being um, you can still find that information why isn't that in the mainstream media why isn't it in the mainstream media and it, there's a reason for that because they don't want you to see that our consciousness is actually connected to what we call or label a paranormal experience which it is and that's part of the whole cover-up of all of this is is to push you into a little box so you can go and sit there you can you sit there Carl, and you just just yeah. be a good little boy right i'll tell you what to do you be a good little boy don't question me <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know? my point yeah and yeah. that's i think it's all interlinked so to go off track from ufology i think is important as well because once you get the realization that it's all interlinked then that really is empowering information because you realize okay what is this then and then ask ask the universe open up your mind to it and the answers will come it might what? be on a podcast might yeah. be on a, a blog post or a website like what? instantlywiser.com yes go to that check it out but yeah, yeah, yeah. i wanted to make a point that what better way to make slaves of people but to make them think that they're not slaves and but yet you are enslaving them with these ideals putting people in boxes and mm. pitting people against each other you've got vaxxed against unvaxxed and masks against non-masks you know the left against the right blah 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 go on go on go on don't bring people together because when you bring people together, you lose all that power. What better way to keep power but to pit people against each other? And that, that's Tell me I'm wrong. One. No, you're not wrong. It's, just, it's going to be. I think that's going to be one of the next phases as well. Is going to be whether you believe in UFOs or not, and what's there to believe if if you you see. <laughs> I've seen them physically or experienced like a, a, an invisible one physically. And yes, okay, you might think I'm a lunatic and not take my word for it, but I'm being completely honest and sincere when I say that. And there's been there's there's thousands of people now, documented evidence, thousands of people saying that they've seen this and they collaborate it with other people who've seen it in a different area. So why would these people this is another question you'd ask the dogmas dogmatic people, why would they collaborate to make this sound like a conspiracy theory? That they saw this entity flying around in their vicinity why would they collaborate like that and who would collaborate that story together when it is people being independently questioned from a, a source yeah maybe the source might be corrupted but the, how many times has this got to happen before you actually realize that it just takes one incident for it to be true out of the millions that have been reported just one incident for it to be true and that's another mind opening thing because that's what got me into this in the first place is like obviously the experience of it.
but it was it was the lies coming from the government and all the conspiracy theories that get thrown out there and i believe that the government throw a lot of them out there especially about the moon landings it was i think it was the company was called jpl that put the conspiracy theory out that the moon landings were fake whether they were not or not i don't i don't know i still haven't had the question of how do we get through the van allen belt um through the radiation through um having the technology of a mobile phone to get us to the moon i'm pretty sure we did but there's no there's questions about that there's questions about that that uh, how how do we do that uh, you can ask um, captain kirk now <laughs> Yes. <laughs> he went into you know, outer really space. <laughs> you just ask Captain you know, Kirk. He can answer those questions for you now. <laughs> William Shatner. We laugh at him. He's so enthusiastic about everything. I don't, know if he's, I don't know if he's part of the agenda or not. But that to me, again, what are we doing as a species? If some say, I do feel that it, there are higher species looking down at us and waiting for us to raise our consciousness before they come and visit us. And they would be looking at us and seeing us flying celebrities into space because they've made the money to do that, but also seeing at the same time people starving on our planet and, and the, the destruction of our actual home, which is our Earth. What do you think they would be thinking looking at that? Do you think they would feel that we are an evolved species with high consciousness and high integrity, high morals, high... Um, value for what we have and high value for each other of course they wouldn't they'd be going well, what are they doing down there what, what is the matter with them and that is to me i feel that's being manipulated and that all comes from the lies that we've been fed since we were born we're born into a lie and we die coming out of a lie and we realize that now luckily i feel we're realizing that now but we, we will also realize that even more when we pass through this mortal coil and look back at this existence and go, oh, I did I did my best. Um, and that's what we call Chanwa in my Qigong practice is that I, I, I completed the, um, the journey of my soul, which is what I feel like my purpose is, is just to talk now and just say, this is my experience. This is how I feel. Listen to me, please. Don't literally take on board uh, what I'm saying as gospel truth and please don't worship me outside my front door <laughs> just listen to it and just take it on for yourself and try and open your mind to more of these possibilities because when you do you realize this is just a, a tiny um, experience that we have as physical beings and when you tap into your consciousness the experience gets bigger and I feel that there are people who are claiming that they, they, they are meeting ETs and extraterrestrials uh, th because they've raised their consciousness and again all it takes is one of them to be true for them to say wow you know good for you mm -hmm. how can i do that and that's well, what where i'm at at the moment well, wanna, the whole point I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off but i mean the whole point of the podcast is not for me to come out and say i want you to believe everything that uh, i bring people on my show to tell you now, what I bring people on for is for you to have another way of looking at things. You mm. can you make up your own mind what you decide. I'm not going to sit here and tell you any any way. Just like when I talk about on my paranormal, I mean my positivity shows. I I was able to overcome a lot of my anxiety and depression and things like that through meditation. But I also tell people, I am not a doctor. You talk to a doctor before you, you listen to anything that I have to say. I'm just a podcaster. There's nothing special about me. I'm just bringing you information. Mm. You make your own decisions on those. When it comes to things like the paranormal, I mean, we are, a lot of us are a part of this community and we truly believe we're out to, to prove it. I, I'm, I'm a big skeptic, which is why you don't find a whole lot of uh, evidence on my social media websites that kind of thing i will put some evidence out there and say you tell me if you can figure out what this is because i can't mm. Mm. so that that's that's the whole thing opening your mind looking at things in a different way there might be something that i might be a little more convinced might be a ghost or a ufo or bigfoot or something 
but if somebody else who has more knowledge can come in and say, no, this is what this is. Uh, that's the whole point of the show. Yeah, I agree with you. But the point is that also the, the controlling system brings in people who will give you like 80, 90 percent truths. Um, and then they'll, the, the, um, a loaded comment will come in that is actually the sort of crescendo of, of the interview. I saw a guy talking about, he was saying he was a philosopher, a British guy, I saw, saw him being interviewed yesterday. And he was talking about this evolving of consciousness and how it's a, a, it's a, it's a break away from the, the, the going back to the one theory and all this kind of stuff. And I thought, it's interesting what he's saying. He's not really addressing it as a cyclical thing. He's more talking about it being a, a linear thing, which I thought was a, a little bit incorrect. Because I, I do really feel that we are in in a cycle, but I might be wrong. I don't know. I, I believe that too, because there, yeah. if you look at a circle, there's no beginning and no end. No, so we're always in a cycle. But he was talking about this, and then the the the, the drum the, the 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 bomb dropped, as it were, because he said to, he goes. But we have things in the future that are coming that could be really devastating to us. And of course, what was he talking about? And I thought, well, this could be interesting. What it could be, it could be Operation Blue Beam, where the UFOs invade us, or it could be um, a catastrophic uh, 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 asteroid hitting the planet, which is, what's that great name, Shirakovsky or something he, he talks about, there's an imminent uh, asteroid. No, of course, it's climate change. Climate change is coming, and we've got to watch out for it because and then, Changes of course, you go day. into these climate ta taxes and there's anything. Uh, there you go. That's why he's on this show. It's mm -hmm. not about any of this philosophy that he's talking about or the book that he's written. All very good, all very well um, sort of uh, executed with what he was talking about. Very slick. Uh, I'm sure his book is very slick as well. But that was why he was on that show, to convince that audience that this climate change thing is coming. Well, Peter, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my uh, sorry, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> the climate is changing. Believe it or not, the climate changes. Is, hang on a minute. It's just changed then as well. How much we have to do with the... To, to even think of the arrogance of... Especially with carbon. Carbon. Uh, uh, if you think about a volcano, blasts out more carbon into the atmosphere than we can as a species on the planet. No. You know, it's, no. And then when you look at all the green... Um, areas like how corn these there are climate scientists actually that you can go and speak to and they'll tell you what are they talking about at the uh, ipcc they'll tell you that and then they'll talk about the um carbon and how that can be sucked up by a, a cornfield and you could be measuring carbon one second and it's you think oh my goodness me this is a catastrophe and next minute there's hardly anything there because it's just been sucked up by the corn so how it's a bit like the PCR test with uh, um, for COVID. It's how do you how do you <laughs> how do you test it? Oh my goodness me! Uh, and you've got these people saying, "Well, yes, we really care about the environment." So you're putting things into your products that's going to go through human beings, could damage them, but it's gonna, they're going to be excreting it out one way peeing it or putting it out into the drainage system which is going to go out into the reservoirs which is going to go out into the environment and you're telling me you're an environmentalist get real please get real and, and it's, it's they're not environmentalists they're destroying our planet by what they're doing and yet they, they want to tax us more with carbon mm. or fossil fuels or anything like that and it's like I feel that we, we've got the energy sources. I think they created that back in the 1950s of energy sources where they can really suck energy out of the void. I think they've got that already personally. And they're just not giving it to us because you can't control it. And I personally feel there's some credence to the idea that the pyramids were energy systems and there's and the, um, the pyramids all over the world like all over china all over everywhere I think mexico they were energy systems and there's people now making these um ideas come to light and you look at them and you go oh my goodness me you know, he's, he's, he's actually got energy he's, he's he's put the the same as the as the big pyramid he's put put the same um sort of structure in there with the water going underneath and moving and the hydrogen and he's actually created an energy beam out of that pyramid that he's built on, on in his grounds. You go, 
Well, if he's done that, what's that thing there then? You think it's a tomb? You think there's Egyptians in there that are dead? Are you, are you serious? And, and, and how was it built? How was it built? Was that built by UFOs? Or was that built by sound? Or, or Because we couldn't build them today. And these, these are the anomalies that I uncover casually. I'm not a really big researcher in that respect. But I casually unfold them and watch, uh, watch them with interest to say, that guy's got a point. He's talking about that and how were they built and what is this? Uh, and was it an energy source? So I feel that they are using fossil fuel to control us. And now they're using the climate to put the price up of the fossil fuel so that they drive us even further into poverty, drive us even further into their control. So they say there's a lack of um, fossil fuels on the planet. What are you talking about? A lack of fossil fuels on the planet? Uh, it's just, to me, it's again the mad scientists coming up with these ideas and yes of course it would be better to use um, pollution free energy but it's not that bad what we're doing with it at the moment is getting cleaner and better all the time what I find uh, same as Einstein what is incredible is to use nuclear power to heat water so we can heat, heat water to get electricity to, to, to push the generators around why are we using nuclear power we could use the the heat of the earth the heat of anything to, to heat the water up to produce the electricity or the mo just a motion you just mm. need a motion and the, the wind farms are rubbish they they're, they're not working properly so there yeah. are elements I can attest to, to our, that <laughs> oh jesus well, and these people are, wind farms are the answer you know you go, well, what about all the birds and all the wildlife that are getting killed in the, the you, you're not worried about your environment and how your environment looks you think your environment is not part of your consciousness so when you look out to your environment you see all these stupid little f fans flying around no there's better answers to that and again that is to do with the lack of, uh, they want us to feel like we're in lack all the time these people and, and we're course. not in lack we're in abundance we're in a wonderful state of flux and and, and growth in this in environment that we live in today and they keep pulling us into this scarcity mode which brings us into the fear which is what i was talking about with my qigong practice we go into this fight or flight mode our uh, intuition starts to get holes in it and so therefore we're, we're being pulled by exterior forces into thinking how we should think rather than actually allowing our energies to expand and then focusing on our intuition and go yeah this makes sense to me or that doesn't make sense to me or i'll look into that so you're more open-minded and flowing with life which is what we're supposed to be we're supposed to be flowing and flowing with this information with the ufos is a difficult one at first and it was difficult for me until i had my experiences uh, more experiences i mean as i said i had an experience when i was a child skeptical about it because i thought well i really don't know what that was and then as they grew and then the paranormal experiences grew i think well there's something to this what is it now and as i'm going into deeper meditations i'm experiencing more in what i call the astral world where it's real this is real as this is this physical world and we just because we feel that it isn't doesn't mean it isn't because it is and it's more there's more it's far more complex this reality than meets the eye and i i think we need to embrace that fact to grow our consciousness to move into the next phase of our development which i i do believe that the the vaders are telling the truth that we're moving into a golden age at the moment because i'm seeing it at the moment now just having conversations like this is a yeah. progression forward and just so keep talking until we all want to really commune and really love each other and and help each other instead of giving power to other people over us this things are not going to change i i believe there is going to come a day when people finally say you know what i i've known my neighbor neighbor for 30 years why are we arguing over uh, politics and things like this we we you know we watched each other's kids and bandaged each other's kids knees and, and elbows when they got hurt and we had barbecues and and all these things go back to that people quit letting politicians rule your life quit mm. making them cause a divide because all that is is giving them more power and making you more of a slave i'm uh, i'm sorry that's this that's the way it is um i will say this um I'm, i've started a new journey um 
I haven't taken the uh, the first step per se, um, other than looking into the information into the world of psilocybin. And yeah. uh, I'm, I'm going to see how that works for me. Um, I'm, I heard that it has a lot of uh, mental and physical um, healing abilities. So I'm going to try that out. I'm going to share that with everyone. Be ready. Uh, Just be ready for what happens. Be ready. And, and I, I would say no fear. No fear. Well, I hear you. I, I just think that's also a next step in my spiritual journey. Brilliant. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually started talking to experts in the field. I guess you call them experts. They, they definitely know a lot more about it than I do. Yeah. Um, and and uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Peter, we're going to stop right here, but I would like to schedule you to come back again so we can continue this conversation because I still feel like there's things we need to touch on. Um, I, I'm going to try to maybe get some experts in here to uh, to get in on this conversation if that's possible. Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm you know me. I, I love meeting people. I love talking. And uh, I've got a very open mind, and I'm. This is important stuff we're doing. It is. It is. And so. it doesn't matter if it rings with one person, two person, 10 people, 20 people. It doesn't matter. If it, as long as it's people are getting this information, if it's just one that wakes up, that goes and wakes up another one, then it's like a domino effect. Um, if a thousand people wake up, brilliant. You know, if a million people wake up, you've got to praise the Lord. Knowledge <laughs> is power. Lord is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just opening up, so I'm I'm more than happy to include me on anything you want to. I'm more than happy. I, I really do appreciate what you're doing. I love Thank the you. two channels that you've got, um, like the positive channel and this, because it, it, to me it's almost like they're interlinking. It really does feel they like really it's interlinking. They really are. Yeah, uh, and to me that's the whole. We're starting to really get to the bottom i think with these conversations of what this experience is as a human being and it's nothing to be scared of and you're right i think once you go into that consciousness realm which i'm actually doing it naturally with meditation but i'm thinking about doing something like that as well and it's you reach that level of understanding because it just breaks down this material physical world and we, what the average is called the dream world, which is our imagination, which is beautiful it, once you let it to be. But if you if you don't, if you let it be clouded with dogmas, your imagination is horrible. Because you think, oh, God, it's going there, it's going there, the world's doing this. No, once you get it past that and you transcend past that and what you can create with your imagination is a beautiful thing. And it's a reality. It's not something that's fluffy and not doesn't exist. It is it's true. So... Yeah, I'd love to have a conversation about that. It's brilliant. Awesome. Well, we're going to do that. And if anybody that's watching us or listening to us out there, if you have something you'd like to chime in on, um, please get a hold of me. Uh, in the description, I have my email and plus uh, links to social media. I, I'm open to conversation. Uh, I'm, I'm looking to get people on both sides of, of the fence on this. You know, the, the ones that are for and ones that are against, I guess you'd say. Uh, because I'm, I'm all about education and, and I hope you are too. Open your mind. That's all I'm asking. Just open your mind and let's, let's find some answers. So if you're here for the first time yeah. on the channel, thank you for joining us. I hope you'll come back and please subscribe. If, uh, if you have been a supporter of us, I, I thank you for that as well. Um, without you, I just would not be able to do or even want to do what I'm doing if it weren't for these folks out here thank you so much for everything you do thank you peter for being here uh, everyone take care god bless and peace oh boy